Well, what are we, what are we still doing here? I don't Eric, know. We've, we, you know, we've been playing great songs all night, and uh, I can't imagine anything that, that could top it other than... Uh, there's a know. man. There's a man behind all of these songs. A man yeah. uh, who lives at a place called Fox Hollow. Yeah. We, uh, we recreated the songs of Fox Hollow record for the folks. Yes, we have done that. And so uh, he can do... We, somebody just asked me, well, what, what's, what's Tom T going to do? And my answer is, I would not predict that for, you know, ever for any reason. You never know. We don't know. Uh, but he's the most... Uh, gracious and, uh, and kind, kind of unpredictable. Uh, we obviously have so much love and admiration for him, as everybody on this stage uh, does, and I know all of you do. A, a guy who changed the language of country music for the better, a guy who's written some of the most uh, exquisite songs I've ever heard. Uh, from Olive Hill, Kentucky, ladies and gentlemen, the storyteller, Tom T. Hall. and I'm 75 and it's about time, so. Yeah. Now, I mention that because I've got the lyrics to my songs here in case I forget. I'm, I've been retired a while, but uh, somebody said, do you remember the words to your songs? And I said, yes, I remember the words to my songs. I just don't know what order they go in. That's right. So, so I've got them down here. Did I thank my dogs? Did I get? My wife, Miss Dixie, is here. We've been married. And uh, best move I ever made was talking her into marrying me. I told her, I said, this was a long time ago, but I said, you know, we get enough money to last us a long time. If we get married, I said, I've got $750 in the bank. <laughs> so you know how women are, they go for the money, you know. And, <laughs> and, oh, and the last time I was on stage, I didn't think our best friend and our little friend, Becky Lawrence, who's here tonight. <laughs> Becky, Becky's been with us a long time. Becky had parents, a father and a mother, so we couldn't adopt her. So she adopted us, and has been a very difficult taskmaster, but we've lived with it all this time, and it'll go on. And Rebecca Lauren, uh, Long is here, the greatest bluegrass music engineer in the world. Terry Jerkins and uh, Randy and Jess and Jill here, the Jerkins family, they're having a wedding Saturday and they didn't ask me to sing. <laughs> so I am sending out Mark Horn to do the hog song for him at the wedding. <laughs> well, I want to sing a song here tonight. I have a, a pleasant but a difficult little task. There's a gentleman here who is an elder gentleman, not in the greatest health. He's from uh, New Hampshire, and he's been a lifelong Tom T. Hall fan. He knows every song I ever recorded and damn near everything I ever said. <laughs> and I love fans like that, so he's here tonight and he put me on his bucket list. And his... This is the greatest compliment I've ever had. And 
uh, his uh, daughter Denise and his son-in-law Bill drove him down here from New Hampshire and uh, he wanted me to hear sing him a song so I'm going to do it now this is the song many of you had not heard but uh, it's a true story. I went to visit a friend of mine in the hospital, and we, he was in a ward, and there were several beds in the hospital, and I'm sitting there talking to him, and four or five beds down, there's a, an old fella in the bed there just raising hell, man. They, they had him kind of one leg pulled up in the air and bandages on him and tubes in him, and I said, what's wrong with that fella down there? And he said, He's a hog farmer, and his tractor turned over on him, and they don't think he's going to make it. And I said, well, that's sad. So I left and went home and came back two weeks later to get my buddy out of the hospital. He's all fixed up and ready to go. And I looked down, and that bed's empty. And I said, well, that's terrible. I said, I, I guess I told my buddy, I said, I don't guess that old guy made it. And he said, no, he said, about two or three days ago, he got up in the middle of the night, unplugged everything, put on his overalls, and left. <laughs> and so, I guess he's out there feeding them hogs. So I said, well, hell, I'm going to write a song about that. <laughs> and this is, this is for old uh, Skeeter Plummer back there. Well, I met him in a hospital about a year ago. Why well, I still remember him, I guess I'll never know. But he'd lie there and cry out in a medicated fall. Here I am in this damn bed, and who's gonna feed them hogs? Four hundred hogs comes to. 400 hogs, they're just standing out there. My wife can't feed them, and my neighbors don't care. They can't get out and run around like my old hun dog. Here I am in this damn bed, and who's gonna feed them hogs? Well, his face was lean, and his hands. His way was hogs, and his nature was tough. Well, his doctors tried to tell him that he might not live at all. But all he ever talked about is who's going to feed them hogs. Four hundred hogs comes to eight hundred hams. Hey, that's a lot of money. up and there are people waiting on that meat. Now the doctors say they do not know what saved the man from death, but in a few days he put on his overalls and he left. And that's all there is to this small song, but waitress, if you please, would you bring me some coffee? And a hot ham sandwich, please. 